here we are at the imposing patrician grandiosity that we know and love called the Mount Auburn Cemetery of a May 14th. Flowers all over the place. One of my absolute favorite nature bloggers and internationally recognized authority on the life of Thornton Burgess, Peter Elkers, was here Sunday, or not too long ago, and was overwhelmed by warbler overload. This is where every imaginable urban birder comes at this time of year. Just as the birds are showing off their plumage, so too are the bird photographers showing off their gear. You can, find, you can go around here and just take photos of people taking photos of birds with outlandish huge telescope lenses and whatever. And of course, if there's some hapless cerulean warbler or some warbler no one's spotted lately, they will converge in mass and the poor bird will near die of embarrassment from the overload of attention it seems to be getting. Generally, I'm just gonna putz around here today. My real aim of getting out was to examine that abandoned rail line. The Mount Auburn Cemetery people have a bunch of great YouTubes that I'll probably make a playlist with. So there's not a lot of need to duplicate their stuff. I've been coming here since the late 1970s. It is a killer place to spot birds. And, uh, it's been interesting to see the growth of interest in this sort of stuff, these passive outdoor recreation things like watching birds. Used to be able to come here at this time of year and it would be nearly empty. And now it's just completely mobbed. In addition to, of course, the usual business being conducted of having funerals. B.F. Skinner is in here somewhere. I have no idea where and I don't intend to find out. Mount Auburn combines elements of an arboretum with its fundamental aspect as a necropolis. You can see the elaborate garden beds. It's a fairly high maintenance place. This is the central entrance. I'll probably wander over by the tower somewhere, see what the heck I find. Look at all the spires on Bigelow Hall. Those are called finials, I learned, before they built Widener over at Harvard. There was another building that they destroyed called Gore Hall. And you can find it online, images of it. And those spires mostly ended up at the Appleton grasslands and Appleton Farms properties of the trustees of reservations. I guess the Appleton family are old Harvard buffs. There's one on the Harvard campus, but this building looks to be a throwback to a time when that form of ornamentation was actually popular. And there's just plants everywhere. And this is a little, one of several stagnant, rotten little ponds that nonetheless will often attract interesting birds because it's one of the few places with reliable water and thus it attracts people with big ridiculous lenses. And there you have a sweep of what appears to have been a little kettle hole ravine at one time. Some 
some fairly old graves. And lots of interesting shrubberies. We're at Consecration Dell. Where 2,000 people gathered for the dedication of this thing in 1831. Must not have been much to do. There's an engraving. Evidence of a long removed monument. See all the hemlocks and the various other features.